everyone, good afternoon. So, by the way, I am Rose Vaporoso from BS at 2B, and I'm going to discuss about haiku poetry. But before I proceed to my discussion, let me first state my objectives. So, um, my objectives are um, students can define what is haiku poetry. Second, students can distinguish the different characteristics of haiku poems. And lastly, students can create their own haiku poems by applying the principles of haiku poetry. Okay, so now let's proceed to um, my discussion. So, but before we um, deep, deep, uh, go deeper on haiku poetry, Let's have first a um, revision from the previous lesson. Okay, so what is poetry? Okay, so as you can see in the screen, poetry is a literature that evokes a concentrated imaginative awareness of, of experience or a specific emotional response through language chosen and, in, and arranged for its meaning, sound, and rhythm. Okay, so indeed, a poetry is a um, type of literature or artistic writing that tries to appeal to the reader's emotions and imagination through a variety of different poetic techniques. Okay, so um, uh, the poets is are usually uses a combination of rhythm, the word choices, sounds, rhymes, structures, and more, just only to create a piece of writing that steers the reader's feelings. Okay, so in poem as well comes in a lot of different forms and style, and the text is often separated into paragraphs which are called stanzas. Okay, so a poem is usually about or alluding to. Okay, so a poem also has a specific topic when you're writing a particular poem. Okay, or a specific theme. Okay, so there are mm, common themes that the poet or the writers um, express their their feelings through written words, no? So, first um, is about love. Second, about nature, where it can be about friendship, family, it can be about animals, it can be about um, growing up or aging, or um, maybe in war, prejudice, or bravery and courage and can be also in the environment just depend on the writers what theme that they will use um on expressing their emotions through written works okay so in um poetry as well there's different kinds no, of poetry so we've already um tackled these kind of poetry no, so I just only mention here a few, a few types of poetry. So um, here is, here are the blank verse, um, the free verse, um, haiku, sonnet, epic, limerick, and ballad. Okay, but here in my discussion, I will just only mention, or I will just only um go deeper on this specific um, type of poetry no? which is the haiku poetry okay so now let's have here the haiku okay so what is haiku poetry okay so a haiku poetry or a haiku is a form of poetry or a form of poetry that focuses on a brief moment in time sense of sudden illumination or enlightenment okay so this is a very short japanese poem 
that also that always uses the same numbers of syllable okay a three line format okay so the first line has five syllables second line has seven syllables and the third line has five syllables okay so the traditional japanese haiku is a three line poem with 17 syllables written in five seven five syllable count often focuses on images from nature and haiku emphasizes the simplicity the intensity and the directness of expression of the poem okay so unlike other poems haikus uh, usually don't rhyme okay so as we know that um, every poem has its own uniqueness and it has also its own simplicity okay but haiku is different from other poem okay so let's just have a short um, background of haiku okay so a haiku is a type of short poetry as i've mentioned that originated in japan although although the name haiku dates only the 19th century the form has existed for years of uh, for hundreds of years so originally haiku were known as huku so it's spelled as h-o-k-k-u and were a component of a larger poetic known as ringa okay so ringa are lengthy so these are um, the poem the poets no are being linked or being um collaborate collaborate in one um, uh, poem yeah so that typically have multiple authors um by in, uh, for instance for instance no a one a one poem has nine lines so you suppose um yeah so you're supposed to have or you suppose that that um that poem has a three authors since every line has one author, specifically the haiku poem. Okay, so haiku poem is what I've mentioned earlier that has a three line that composed five seven five syllables. Okay, so it um that that poem has a nine lines, so it has a three um, authors in that poem. So by the um, 17th century, poets had begun writing huku as standalone stand pizzas. And by the end of the 19th century, poet Matsoka Shiki was reforming the genre while working within it. So once of his, one of his reforms was coining the term haiku. And also, um, the father of haiku was Machu, Matsubashu. Okay, so let's just um, let's um, let's try to know him later. Okay, so I also have a question here. So um, a haiku also is um, a Japanese literature. No, it's a Japanese literature. Um, haiku began in 13th century in Japan as the opening phrase of Ringano, an oral poem, generally a hundred stanzas long, which was also composed syllabically. The much shorter haiku broke away from the Ringa in the 16th century and was mastered a century later by Matsubashu. No? Okay. And, yeah. And also, another question. Okay. Another question. Okay, here Matsubashu. Okay, so Matsubashu. Yeah, so Matsubashu. No fun fact for Matsubashu. He contributes to haiku extended beyond his own work. So he also established a haiku traditional tradition known as the Bashu school. And also Matsubashu is known as the father of haiku poetry. Okay, so the school of, Mats, uh, of Matsu 
emphasizes simplicity, clarity, and the use of natural imagery. So the schools become highly influential and shape the development of haiku poetry in subsequent generations. So throughout his career, or throughout his career, Basho remained dedicated and refining his craft and um, pushing the boundaries of haiku. His poems were characterized by their economy of language, you know, profound insights, and ability to evoke deep emotions and contemplations in reading. Yeah, so Matsubashi's impact on Japanese literature is really big. Yeah, it, it really um, affects the Japanese literature. It has a good, maybe it has a good effect on Japanese literature. Um, poetry cannot be overstated, no? and his legacy as a, ma a master of haiku continues to inspire and resonate with poets and readers worldwide. Okay, so Matsubashu's also legacy lies in his immense contributions to Japanese poetry, no? particularly in haiku. Okay, so his ability to capture the essence of a moment and express profound truth um, through simple and evocative language set him apart as a master of the craft okay so now let's have here his one of um, classic written works no? by Matsubashu okay so in as you can see here in this um, poet here in this poem poem no this poem has um, has no five seven five syllable okay because this one was already translated in English um, language okay so if it's an English language where um, your haiku written in Japanese should have five seven five syllable okay but if it um, translated in English um, it's it's okay if it doesn't have a Five seven five syllables. It's just that the original should have five seven five syllable. Yeah. So let's. So I will read this one. So listen very carefully. Okay. So now let's have this one. Um, an old band, frog, a frog jumps in the sound of water. Okay. So. As he wrote this one, so the form has already evolved, you know, many of its irregular traits, including its famous syllab syllabic pattern, you know, um, and have been routinely broken. So, however, the philosophy of haiku has been preserved. The focus on the brief moment in time, you know, brief moments in time, the use of provocative, provocative, and the colorful images no, that was being um, expressed in this um, poem. So the ability to be uh, the ability to be read in one brief and the sense of sudden enlight enlightenment of the readers. Okay, so now let's have proceed to the characteristics of haiku poetry. Okay, so, but before we have um, go deeper for the characteristics, I will um, ask you a, a question again, still related to the um, words that I have stated earlier. Okay, so let's just have a review, only a review. Okay, so how is haiku structured? is haiku structured okay so one of haiku's defining characteristics is its concise structure okay it has its concise structure so it has a five seven five syllable first line five second line second syllable syllables then the third line has five syllables okay but if the poem also doesn't follow this um, simple structure, it doesn't call it haiku, okay? It's not, it's not a haiku, at least in a, 
at least in traditional sense. Okay, so beyond this structure as well, there are a few more rules to write a traditional haiku. One, one is that the lines cannot rhyme. Um, he, here in, a haiku, in haiku, it doesn't have a rules. Yeah, in terms of the um, in terms of the words that it, it doesn't it it's um it's okay if it's not rhymed doesn't have a rhyme scheme no just that only follow the concise structure okay, or the format okay and all right so but here in yeah okay but in japanese still okay still it should have a 575 syllable but it's okay in english it, that doesn't follow the 575 structure syllables okay so now let's have proceed to the characteristics of um haiku poetry okay it has four characteristics okay so in japanese in japanese literature the haiku consists of 17 on what do you mean by on okay so on it is a uh, phonetic units in japanese poetry similar to syllables okay these are arranged in the familiar 575 pattern in many cases but not all the cases and a japanese word has the same number of on as it has syllables in english okay so it has um 17 on okay another defining characteristics of haiku in japanese is the inclusion of at least one kiriji so kiriji translated as cutting word it is a grammatical category of words that create a pause or sense of closure there is no direct equivalent of um of kiriji in english but in many translated haiku or in the other traditional Japanese poems, the uh, kiriji is represented with a punctuation mark like uh, ellipses or a dash. Okay, so, um, and also many poets simply leave out the kiriji if it doesn't work with a chosen theme. So it depends on the poet if they use this kiriji in their um poem yeah so he they the dash yeah so the dash or the ellipses and the poem that called the um kiriji okay but there's also a lot of um authors that doesn't use kiriji as or it doesn't use a ellipses or dash just only a period yes every period in every line yeah, but still connected to one theme. Okay, and another one is um, Kigu. Okay, so Kigu is, it is a theme, no? That was being, um, that was being expressed in the poem. For example, for example, it, um, for example, no? In, in Japanese or in Japan, they use this, or they, they're making a, or they're creating a poem that has a picture in it. So it has a specific picture, then they also put their work below the picture that's, that, um, that um, shows that they, um, that they writing that um, picture, based on the picture, that the poem is based on the picture yes and the theme is nature and the seasons no so this described the season was original purpose of haiku no so this is the theme of the pictures i've mentioned earlier as in kigo so in in, in every um in every poem in japan it has a specific picture then that picture is the theme then the kigo is the words or the words or the um particular poet or poem 
that they've um, been expressed in that picture. Okay, so now let's have here this three classic examples of haiku. This is not a ringa, okay? This is not a ringa, okay? And it's just that this one has different um, authors, no? I will just only give this to you for you to have a reference for you to, um, because we will have a activity later. Okay, so listen very carefully. I will read this one and later I would like you to um, create, yeah, I would like you to have this in for, uh, the, the activity Okay, later. Okay, so first um, classic example of haiku no? First autumn morning, the mirror I stare into shows my father's face. So this one also, this um, particular poem has five, seven, five um, syllable. Okay. First autumn morning, the mirror I stare into shows my father's face. It has a five, seven, five. Okay. Then second, um, Poem, a caterpillar this deep in fall, still not a butterfly. Okay, so let's just count and let's see if it has a 575 syllable pattern. A caterpillar this deep in fall, still, still not a butterfly. Okay, so it doesn't follow the rule, but that's fine. As I've mentioned earlier, that's fine as long as the original um, poem is or has a five seven five syllable. Okay, but in if it's translated in English, it's okay. That doesn't follow as the structure. Okay, then third, well, as you can see, only in first line it doesn't follow the um, structure. Okay. Still, I will read, listen very carefully. In Kyoto, hearing the cuckoo, I long for Kyoto. Okay, so it has three, four, and uh, three, five, one, I long for Kyoto. Five, three, five, five. But as I've mentioned, that the original um, piece or the original written um, Japanese language he, um, here in these um, poem or or um, has a five seven five syllables okay so since you've already um, I think you've already known the um, poetry or the haiku poetry so now I would like you to have this activity okay before that, let's have a um, summary of the haiku poetry. Okay, so a haiku poetry is a short and a dry poem that adheres to a specific three-line, 17-syllable format and traditionally depicts a tiny moment in time and includes a kirinji that creates a pause or sense of closure. Okay, all right. So... But before we proceed also to our um, activity, I would like to ask you a question. This, this question is very easy. I've already mentioned this one earlier. Okay. Um, what are common haiku themes? What are common haiku themes? Okay, so traditionally, haiku were often about nature and seasonal changes. Over time, poets began exploring other themes in haiku, in both traditional and modern haiku. It's common for the poem to focus on a small moment and just to pose distinct images for a dramatic effect. Okay, just only focuses on nature and seasonal changes. Okay, all right, so now let's have here the final activity. So I want you to create your personal haiku poem then and if we have um, yeah so if we have a opportunity to share that one let's share that um, written works that you have 
created. Okay, so thank you so much, everyone. I hope you have a great day.